Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, hanging out with Marissa of Screaming Females. I guess technically you're the screaming female. I identify right? as a female and sometimes I scream. <laughs> it's a true story. But most of the time I'm quiet. Okay, as you are now. Yeah. Excellent. Well, could you quietly tell me about your guitar? <laughs> um, I don't know that much about it. It's How much did it cost you? You told us earlier. It was for free. How'd you get for free? They gave it to me. I Ooh. don't know why. Who's they? G and L. Oh, dang. All um, right. The G stands for something and the L stands for Leo. <laughs> What's the G stand for? Greg? George. George? Do you think so? Yeah, I think it's George Fullerton. Cool. That'd be my guess. Um, this is my second one. It's an S500. I have another one, which is the one that I started playing first when we started our band Screaming Females and then my cousin Doug gave it to me. Um, and I really love it. Um, Here, I'll so, hold it to see. Yeah, try holding it. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, play it. Uh, this one uh, technically and is crap. This one says crap on it. I think that's funny. Um, this one doesn't say crap on it, but um, I broke it last night and Mike said it, it's probably because I should stop throwing it around. Mike plays bass in Screaming Females. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about it. I use. Have you done anything to make it <clears throat> more yours besides the cracks and the throwing? Well, I like to throw it around. Um, I like to, I like to break it a little bit. Sometimes it adds character. Um, other than that, with this one, I haven't really done that much because I just like this guitar already, and so I was very pleased and grateful when I got this guitar. I, couldn't believe it. Um, but I don't really use that many things on my guitar. I use the middle pickup and everything else is just turned all the way up. What do you dig about the middle pickup versus, you know, typically people really are on a, on a strat style guitar. Really? Um, I like they'll go bridge or neck, I feel really? like. Really? I like the round sound. Oh. You know how it's really so hard to talk about yeah. <laughs> music? <laughs> without hearing it? It's hard to talk about music without sounding like um, kind of gross, where you're just like, I like the round sound, or it sounds wet, or it sounds yeah, the, yeah. wide. Like Big it's bottom, like, yeah. Yeah, it's just like inappropriate. It, it seems like inappropriate language, but you're just trying to describe. How are we going to change the vernacular going forward? I don't know. I feel like that's not really my battle. Um, but if it ever, if I feel like if it ever comes up, it's a battle I'd be willing to, to take on if I had the free time. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> but right now I'm booked solid. <laughs> At least for the next couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely for the next couple of weeks. What about uh, strings, string gauges that you use? Um, I uh, use GHS nines because I have tiny little hands, and um, anything over a nine sometimes makes my little hand hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you to get carpal tunnel, so yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, too late. But uh, Shit. it's okay. Uh, I get, I could. I feel like I could rock a 10 or 11 for a day or two before I was like, bending is it's way too hard. I need a nine. Uh, but I very seldomly break strings and on our first national tour when we were, you know, 19 and 20, Mike and I played every night for 70 days straight and didn't change our strings once because we didn't know you were supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys still follow that philosophy or do you change? I feel like there was like, We've been a band for 13 years, and there was a point in the middle of our career career <laughs> that I was just like, I should, I ought to change my strings often. And now I'm kind of back on the old dead. Yeah, just get you want to get the flavor, skin skin fla getting, flavor. Skin with the back the, onto the, the strings. comments. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Gross. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I like to keep some skin flakes on my strings, I feel like it adds good tone. I've seen and I've heard, or I guess I've read documentation that you've also played Telecaster or a particular Telecaster. I do, I have a Telecaster. I think I, I have, I've used it on many records. I, I love recording with it because it has a very great, great tone. <laughs> uh, and it sounds very dissimilar from a Strat, so it adds a lot of variety on our records, but I do not like playing it out because um, the one I have has a rosewood fretboard, and I find those to be kind of sluggish and soft. Um, and also, it's just like heavy. And um, I don't know. I like whipping stuff around. With the things. Telecaster, I'm assuming it only has the two pickups. Where would you typically use that? It has, I don't play it that much. I'm trying to like picture it in my head. I think it just has one, and I think it's the neck pickup. So it moves 
all choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you might be right. I don't know, Mike, do you know? About what? My Telecaster. What, about what pickup position you use? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how many pickups it even has. Oh, I, I haven't know. looked at it in a long oh. time. Do you, have you done anything to either one of these? This looks like you got a Hot Rails yeah, in that Yeah, I put one. Hot Rails in that because um, I was also gifted this by Seymour Duncan. I don't know anything about pickups, but I thought, well, I use this one sometimes, and this one's not so bad, so why don't we take out that one and see what it sounds like there? And guess what? It doesn't sound good, so I never use it. But I have Back to the middle. <laughs> yeah, back to the middle, and I just never bothered to have it removed because I don't use it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What about tunings? You guys typically are in standard? Uh, yeah, standard. Sometimes we use drop D. We had a song once where I tuned the low E to a G, but it's not really necessary to play the song, so I stopped doing it because it stresses my strings out. It stresses me out just hearing it. It makes you feel, yeah, because when you're winding up, sometimes you're like, what if this snaps and goes in my eye and then yeah. I'm blind? Safety, kids. Eye protection. You should wear eye protection because these are not, if this, have you ever had like a high E like go Swing. like in your finger? Yeah. And then you slowly have to pull it out and it's the worst feeling it's not in fun. the whole world. No, it's not fun, but you know what? There are a lot of fun things about guitar. So if you're thinking of getting a new hobby, try electric guitar. It'll make your dad proud of you. Is probably. your dad proud of you? I think so. He loves rock and roll. Well, hell yeah, then. Yo, what's not to like? You know, loud music, a cold one. OK, speaking of that. Whatever we were, your cold one preference is. We're talking about eye protection. I want to talk about ear protection and being loud, because that thing yes, is loud. Yes, loud. Yes. Is well, that why you dig it, or did you get it for free? Um, <laughs> this, this I paid some. Some ca cash Currency. For. Yeah, I used American cash to buy this from my friend Nick, who knows a lot more about amps than I do. I, Mike got his acoustic amp, and I still was using a 40-watt solid-state Hughes and Kettner. I don't know if you've ever been blessed to see such a wonderful model of amplifier, but it's great. It's about this big. It's covered in carpet, so it's really oh my nice. God. So all those nice clean things that you come into contact with on tour, they all stick to it. A lot like, of dust bunnies. Yeah, like dust and beer and like boogers and puke and stuff. So Marissa, I call those memories. They, they are though, some of, some of them are. And so I had that for seven years and then Mike got a, a big, big boy amp. So I needed a big boy amp. And I, for a while I had a custom Hustler, um, which is, I bought it because it looked nice. Uh -huh. And I thought it sounded good when I bought it, but then wow, it was like such a nightmare. It's really heavy, and it didn't work most of the time, and it fell over a lot. Sounds like I'm describing myself. <laughs> uh, Are you off balance often? No, nah, actually, I have pretty good balance. Okay, good. I feel like I'm low to the yeah. ground, so I'm yeah, all right. Your center of gravity I is pretty. I do. I feel. I did one of those Wii Fit once, and it was like your balance is like 98 percent, and I was like, I feel so validated. Self-esteem boost. Yeah. So uh, Nick, Nick showed me this, and I played it, and I was like, I'm sold. This sounds great. And unlike the Custom Hustler, the sound I've been hearing that's been coming out of it for the many years since has still been pleasing to me. So I've just continued to, to have it. It has a recessed speaker. That's what I was going to ask, because now you have that cover that's very ironic, because where the kids are watching this right now. I know, but it's on the internet. Oh yeah? yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not saying get off entirely, just like consider taking a little break. Yeah. Every um, now and then. Jarrett made me this frame so I could put my new my new little grill on it. It was very nice of him. I dig and it. And there are the speakers. I think a cat peed inside of this. Uh, what you gives get, you that feeling? I don't know, because oh, if you get your head in it's God. <laughs> never mind. It's, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it's got a cat pee smell. But uh, so I'm wondering if maybe the, this grill wasn't on for a while, maybe one of Nick's cat, does Nick have cats? Maybe one of Nick's cats blessed it up. Could have been a rando. Could have been a rando, a drive-by. Dumpster yeah. cat. You never know. But um, yeah, so, and that's, that's the story of the amp, really. I, I feel like a lot of people are always like, why are the speakers recessed? And I understand there's probably some kind of, you know. Science. Science, physics chemistry <laughs> behind why they're recessed and how it amplifies the sound, maybe like more dire directional or whatever. But uh, from what I've heard from a lot of other people who enjoy 
amplifiers is that Sun was just making stuff like this because it looks cool. True and, story. And it's, you know, it's, it is not, I don't poo-poo looking cool. I know I haven't quite gotten there yet, but there's nothing wrong with looking cool. I think it's and a I journey. Thought it looked I don't think it's cool. a destination. I think it's a journey. Absolutely. Much like happiness. <laughs> Speaking of that, happiness, why, because uh, I want to talk tone, why are you in the normal channel versus the bright? Or is that just a happenstance where you just put the uh, input in? I mean, I just, I usually err on the side of whatever I think like is the most basic and then kind of. Go from expand there. from there so I just plugged into normal and then fiddled around with the knobs for a while until I got something that I liked I've never even tried the bright channel I probably should um, well, not if you dig what you're hearing but I I tend to like kind of like mid-rangey tone and like sludgier stuff as opposed to like brittle guitars um, in some circumstances not yeah. at all um, but yeah what about the reverb? Do you use reverb on this? Nope, I don't use the reverb. Um, I am not a fan of reverb uh, pretty much at all. I can't really think of a scenario in which I have used it much. I think I, we've used very um, conservative amounts of it in recording, but I've never owned a reverb pedal and I, I don't like it. I think it's also become kind of a little bit of a crutch and very ubiquitous. and. In, in the guitar world here, just hearing it a lot yeah. at shows and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to hear like your guitar's in a well anymore. Even though there's nothing wrong with freshwater wells, I'm sure it's lovely to have one. I just like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Just maybe, wanna... maybe ever since I saw the ring in eighth grade, I've been kind of like traumatized. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Mine was probably with Lassie in the well. With well, the... that's another thing that I I, we talk about Oof. a lot, Lassie, so. Uh, <laughs> Especially when we're, we're talking about tone, we definitely make a lot of Lassie references. What's wrong, boy? It's someone's in the well. <laughs> it's like, put a top on it if people keep falling down. Don't get me started. I know. Can it's, we just, I feel like this is a perfect transition to talk about your pedals. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people like to ask me about this one. It, it's, uh, it says Marissa on it, but don't be fooled. It's a Boss Chromatic Tuner. Wow, what an exciting pedal. <laughs> you can tune to any note, almost, I think. I'll take you, your word for it. Yeah, uh, I've only tried a, cu a couple of them, a couple of the notes. Sometimes instead of D, I might accidentally do a D sharp. I think you probably do six of the That's time. That's a real thrill. I, I try to. Um, I try to tune as little as possible because, you know, you got you to gotta throw a little caution to the wind. I'm not a tune in between every song kind of lady. Sometimes I just go by the seat of my pants. It's a wild Dig world it. out there. Dig it. Um, <laughs> this is another thrill. MXR Phase 90. It has one knob. It makes the phase wave faster. <laughs> what, what, like, where, what, what, uh, like what songs are you using it on? Uh, I like to use the phaser for soloing pretty much only. Okay. Uh, I, ha I used to have a lot more kind of like, I had like a phaser and a flanger and I had like an octave pedal and I was just, I had too much stuff and none of it was like adding really much of anything to the songs. And I think that there, there were often times where maybe my solo sounded like the music that would accompany like a laser light show at <laughs> like some kind of like local science center. Cause there was just too many like zips and zaps and like, silly yeah. sounds so now I'm just kind of doing like a gain staging thing where I just have like I have like this this earthquaker boost that just kind of makes everything a little bit louder mm -hmm. um, is that something you have on a lot or is that kind of like stage one that's that would I would so the I amp would, thrown in stage one I guess that yeah would be stage two. I would consider that stage two although it is on most of the time okay um, and then this is an, an OCD and so I've been using this a lot more than I did on previous records. The Super Collider is made by Earthbound Audio, which is um, out of New Jersey. Our friend Mark makes them, and, and they're, they're really awesome. Isn't they, it like a muff clone? Yeah, like it's a, like a muff clone. Is that like, I it's guess? Like, it's like a big muff mod. Um, and I've, had, I've been using those for a really long time. Um, it's definitely my favorite overdrive that I've, or distortion pedal that I've had. Besides that being a, you know, a, a using a, piece of gear that's from your friend and you're seeing if you like it or not, is it something you gravitated towards because 
uh, I know that you've been fans, or you mentioned uh, Smashing Pumpkins as being a reference. Is that yeah. like, because Corgan, well, obviously, with them off? Yeah, like, I, I definitely, when I was growing up, because I like Smashing Pumpkins so much, I had a big muff, but uh, I just, they would just break all the time. I have a too. really, I had a really hard time getting them loud enough, and I don't know why. They're huge, even though they have the mini ones now or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just like always was struggling with it. And then for a while I was using a rat, which I thought was actually pretty cool. Um, and, it w and that was kind of like the, the weird little period before I discovered these, these pedals. And you know, I found it through, through a friend and it, it wound up, you know, I do get the opportunity to try a lot of different distortion pedals, which is awesome. And it's still like my favorite um, for sure. And he makes, he makes a couple other pedals. Um, but that's the one that I definitely, like if I had to just choose one to use it forever, it would probably bit. be that one. I was yeah. going to say, um, you know, I'll ask Mike too, is, is, is this kind of like your setup for your gear in terms of like, like when you guys just recorded the album that just came out last month, is this kind of what you guys used or are you kind of reevaluate your gear based on tours and, and the new album cycle as you go into it and kind of like, oh, you know, I had enough fun with the phase 90, should I experiment with another phaser? Or yeah. you guys kind of just dialed in and this is it? it. Um, well, since on the new record we had like a lot of time to sit back and talk about different sounds and try different things, um, I definitely disassembled my pedal board and um, Matt Bayless, who made our record, had just gotten a bunch of Earthquaker stuff. Oh, all right. So he and I were kind of puttering around with a lot of those, but pretty simple stuff. Like I, I really liked, I forget what the name of the EQ that they had was, but we were using that quite a bit. Um, just for like really tiny little adjustments mm. in tone. Um, but for the most part, I think on the last record, I was using the OCD a lot and, and that Earthquaker boost. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, my basic, the basics of my like sound and gain staging have pretty much like remained the same um, for, for the past, you know, two or three albums. Yeah, and well, my favorite solo, or at least the tonal solo on that new record is, uh, correct me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but Agnes Martin mm -hmm. is, so I hope that you guys will play that song later tonight. And sure. if you don't, well, oh, oh great. I was just curious, <laughs> what's the recipe for that? Like, uh, obviously you got the That the was, song. Uh, it w it's not in here because I just, I don't want to have too many things because if something breaks, I have like a nervous breakdown on stage and I don't want people to see me that way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even, but it's this, it's the oh, Bit right. Commander. I. I got this from a friend and um, it's the Earthquake, yeah, the Earthquake or Big Commander. So I, I felt really strongly about using this on that song and I don't know why. I've been looking for a pedal that has this sound for like so long and I, I tried like Zvex has one that's kind of similar mm -hmm. and I got like a Pog and it had two outputs so it just wasn't really practical for like touring and stuff. But uh, th this definitely has like the kind of sound I want but I think live it kind of gets lost in the cacophony of like a, a, a band that's actually playing, but recorded, I think it sounds great. Have you guys ever thought about having a second guitar player? Maybe not necessarily oh, as in the band? No, or I just my ego can't deal with that. <laughs> oh, really? Is it really what it is? <laughs> no, I, I think I would just, I don't know. I, it would feel weird. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I don't know I'm if not it's my ego. that you should have one. I'm just curious, because you guys have, well, maybe what, seven albums now? Ego. It might be my ego. I don't know. We've also been a band for 13 years, and so like, I think, we can't, I, I am hard pressed to think of a reason why we might need another guitar player, but I'm also the guitar player. So maybe you should ask Mike. <laughs> I will do that. And then one last thing I want to ask, because we've been kind of talking about some raunchy stuff, again with the words, but uh, like your, your fuzzed out tones and, and with the OCD, but like a song on like Wishing Well. Yeah. Like what would be that recipe? Because that's a completely different uh, category of tones. It's, you know, it's very, I guess light, airy, yeah. reverb, maybe not involved, but a, maybe delay, I guess, just a I delay? Think, yeah, I think on that song, it was probably just uh, Matt Bayless. We recorded that record in Seattle, Rose Mountain. So I think Matt had a son rented for me that sounded pretty similar to mm -hmm. this. And uh, I just played through it, and I think the choruses were just um, probably that boost, and maybe I didn't have the OCD at the time. It might have been this, a Centurion, which is another fuzz mod that Earthbound Audio okay. makes. Um, just dialed back like om almost all the way. So you just have like just a, a nice, light, crisp kind of distortion. And uh, I was using that 
quite a bit at the time, but I think the OCD has been working out a little bit better um, to, to, to provide me with like a, a lighter kind of distortion, like a more of a fuzz and less of a uh, like woofy big muff sound. Mm. And so. I guess, again, with the last question is, um, how do you control your dynamics? Because that's one thing I love about the band is because you guys do go from quiet to loud pretty quick. Is it more like guitar and volume on the the volume on their guitar, or do you have pedals that are kind of dedicated to that, it's, and you're kicking those on, yeah, on and off real quick? It's definitely like that Earthquake or Boost has been really beneficial in like me being able to control like how loud I want things to mm -hmm. be. I, I certainly in some songs will like dial back the volume just with my hand, but yeah. it's a lot easier to just step on something than <laughs> right. have to like play and like touch the volume knob. So for the most part, I just kind of like put the pedals in an order so that it makes sense that it, they become incrementally louder, but also are in a position that it makes it easy for my foot to find them when we're playing the show. <laughs> and uh, just so we give some love and, and I guess make sure it gets noticed is the DD6. You got a lot of respect, <laughs> the Boss <laughs> DD6. Uh, yeah, I got that when I was like a kid, but it has this cool function on it uh, called, it's just called like a warp function. So basically you can just like step on the pedal and it'll hold the delay signal ah. indefinitely until you let go. I literally use it for nothing else, but um, I like I like it because it just, like you said, it adds like this whole world of dynamics. Like I could, I could have like this, endlessly perpetuating delayed tone and and then like turn the knob and it'll like oscillate and be faster and slower and it's just fun to thing to improvise with yeah marissa i thank you so much thank you. not only for walking us through your gear but um also the comic relief yeah it's good to laugh laughter is the best medicine it's good it's good for your heart and your soul yeah. thank you very much my heart and soul is warm oh, okay thank mike you. you're next and we're on the other side of the stage now with King Mike. Mike, how you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent, man. Thank you guys for just pulling into town, getting your stage. We don't even have the drums up yet, so I appreciate all this. Yeah, we want to make a little space for you. <laughs> we got the space. Room to, talk to spread to your wings. Let's spread the wings and talk about this Rickenbacker. Okay. So this is a Rickenbacker. I've had it for 13 years now. i played almost every single show with it. How did you come to own it? My dad bought it for me Killer. when I was a kid. Were you always kind of like, that dream bass will be that 4003? Yeah, I mean, it? it's like definitely the coolest looking, yeah, you know? Yeah, I can't deny it. And that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got a popsicle stick that's holding the, the pickup in place here. I actually don't really use that pickup, though. I, mostly, I was gonna ask, okay. Mostly use that one, and uh, Is there yeah. anything else you've done to it? Any other No other mods or anything. On my backup, I have I'll a, it's a Hondo, it's like a knockoff Rickenbacker lawsuit one. And the pickups are atrocious single coils. They sound terrible. So I wired them in series to create one humbucker so that I could sound like I'm an Alice in Chains or something. <laughs> yeah. um, like Mike. But yeah, that's like a toy compared to this one. It's like, it's worth probably like a 10th as much as this is worth, but it has a similar feel. So when this breaks, that's the one. So when you're playing on stage with screen females, are you kind of bouncing between pick and fingers, or are you just always pick or fingers? Um, there, there was a while where there was like a song or two that I played with my fingers, but I don't remember what they are. <laughs> but now, now I can't. I, I do it at home. That's why I kind of like. That's why I haven't gotten a new pick guard because I can use this little popsicle ah, stick as a thumb as anchor. Thumb rest, yeah. And like you know, just demos in the basement or whatever. But in a live setting, I'd never play with my finger unless I drop my pick in yeah. the middle of the song. Is it because you like the attack or? Yeah, I, I don't know. I just got used to it. I, it's more of a comfort thing, I guess, because I, I play with the brightness switch on here. So even if I do play with my fingers, it's going to be pretty punchy. Yeah. And it's a Rick, which <laughs> yeah. is also pretty punchy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, you're already alluded to it. So tell me about how you got to own this sweet old acoustic. Um. Some friends of mine who are big amp heads said you should get this and so I did and I love it it's this is my second one the first one crapped out I had kept it around for parts this one broke a couple days ago but then a nice a nice boy in Cincinnati fixed it for me um, I got PV Black Widow speakers in there. Was he at least 18? Because that would be yes, like child he, he was probably, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm just was probably sure. 32. Mike I don't want to get in trouble but I just got to check out. I got this uh, monster cable. It's held together with duct tape. 
because that's really good for capacitance. Yeah, and you know, pro gear, pro attitude. That's what they say. <laughs> Yeah. Do you find yourself I like fast fret to clean my strings? <laughs> actually, that's yeah, it's worth actually mentioning. You got the tuner up top. I got here. the yeah, the Boss Chromatic tuner, just like Marissa. Because you uh, don't have any other pedals to look at right here. Yeah, I have my pedal era ended when when my when my pedal broke. And, and you tried it a second time. Yeah, I tried it a second time, broke again. And you're like, and that's riddance. it. Yeah, it's it's re like Marissa said, it's really stressful when it breaks on stage. Yeah, I you got to scramble to figure out what's going wrong. Um, well, at least with just the one pedal, you could be like, well, at least yeah. unplug it and keep going. I also have a fuzz pedal that's really cool uh, that I got from Lone Wolf. Do you Are, know them? Not, I'm not familiar. It came with hot sauce. The hot sauce is great. Oh, really? I, I might have to get some more of that. But the, the fuzz is really cool. It's really unwieldy and out of control. Um, and I don't use it in this band, but it's another fun toy to have at home. I asked Marissa about having the second guitar player, and so then I'll ask you a different question, but kind of along the same lines. How do you fill the mix when she kind of goes off into one of her solos? And you're, is it more of about how you're playing, or I guess I'll be, I was going to ask I mean, about what you do to make it up for it? But I you play a lot of like I play a lot of like power chords. Um, I've been doing, doing less of that in more recent years. Um, I don't know. It's just it's a, we're a loud band. Yeah. And, your, your ears will do the work for you. If you're expecting a rhythm guitar because you hear it on the album, you're not going to be too upset that Marissa's shredding. Yeah, and you're no, not no, hearing no. somebody like strumming along, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess to go full circle, I should have asked this earlier, but uh, bass strings, bass strings and gauges you're playing. I use the GHS, uh, I think it's like 45 to 105, the mediums or whatever. And are you pretty lackadaisical when it comes to changing strings like pretty much unless they break um i used to change them once a week on tour and then i stopped i got lazy and <laughs> now they're dead <laughs> <laughs> i don't know bass strings are way expensive though they so, are but ghs hooked us up they got, got us some strings at cost so that's when i started doing the once a week thing now i don't know I gotta get some more. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, yeah. King Mike to be legit. Thank Thanks. you so much. Sorry, I don't have anything else to talk about. No, man, it's, it's just the, the bass, you know. Yeah, but it's important. Yeah. Well, well thank thanks. you very much, King Mike. All right. This is Chris Keys from Your Guitar. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.